basically, I have a, an inherent amount of noise in my head. And we work until the noise quiets down. And that's a series of processes that refine the circle until there's nothing about it that bothers me, which is a, an incredibly elusive endeavor. But when the noise is quiet, the circle is done and we're good. <laughs> The whole initial point of this drum business was that solid wood has different inherent characteristics and if we did our job well, we could exploit and coax out every bit of specific nuance that each species had and each one would be different than another one. The choice happened fairly quickly. Chose the Alaskan yellow cedar right away. It just had a, a warm sound right away, but then when you really attack it, it pops out there and there's room to go. I like the sonic properties of it uh, over the three species we had to choose from and the aesthetic qualities, especially being able to pick out our own boards, uh, appealed to me. Our job is kind of just to get out of the way. It feels like Mother Nature's done all the work. We just need to not fuck it up and do a really good job not fucking it up. And then everything that that wood already inherently holds will come out in the instrument. It's the dichotomy of humility and obsession that I find is crucial for me, for, for artists and craftsmen. Like if I can smell arrogance and ego from a mile away and he has none of it, but yet he should, and to me that is very intriguing. Every little thing we do in making this, this drum is really important. I never realized before what goes into making a quality instrument, so it was very eye-opening. I remember being that kid at woodworking school, making the first thing that I actually felt proud of and looking for one of the professors to somehow convey an appreciation that I was too excited to put words to. I was, it was like, maybe I'm not a piece of shit kind of thing. I mean, for me, um, I didn't really believe that I was gonna be one of the people that made one of those things. I didn't feel it yet. And at some point in this class, they get that feeling and I see that look and suddenly I'm them back when I was 25 at woodworking school. And how it makes me feel is like, that was such a gift to me and that I got to facilitate them getting there. I know what that feels like and, and I, can, I can feel like that kid again. Making the drum here was a much easier and less stressful than I thought, but that's knowing that I have two geniuses of woodworking to keep us from messing up. I would never in, in a million years go home and try to do this. I have a newfound respect for the art of making a drum, but at the same time I realize it really isn't as impossible to do, but I would never do it on my own. <laughs> it, it's crazy, it's crazy that, it, that one drum can, can change your, you know, growing up in South Dakota, you don't get access to things of this nature, and you almost have to go look for it. So I'm glad, I'm glad I found this. It's kind of changed my perception of drum making and, and what goes into it. created an addiction. It's, it's definitely has a narcotic aspect to it. It feels really good to have facilitated some sort of joy for someone on that level. I got an email from a guy. He was writing from his basement, sitting at his drum set, saying, my kids are asleep. I can't play my drums right now, and I'm just sitting here looking at them. And I feel happy in a way that I haven't felt in many years. And that feels like, that email alone validated every hour we spent, every dollar I wasted on stupid ideas, every time I wanted to quit this business, all of that was erased in that moment. And I never expected stuff like that from this business. I was making wooden circles. I knew how to make wooden things. I decided to start making wooden circles because I was broke and I couldn't afford a new kit. And now we end up there. That's absolutely feels like success. Such a 
such a good crack to it that feels good. Just hitting the drum. Oh my God.